Praise the Lord, everyone. How are you people? I'm very glad to see you again through this video. Many people I have met, many people I didn't meet. But I believe that this is a relationship made by God. And I thank God for bringing me onto this realm to speak to you all once again in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So I'm very happy and people who are connected to us, I'm very happy to say that even now the prayer warriors are continuously praying for you people and your family protection. So don't worry, don't bother. The prayer back support is always there from us. And we. I would like you also to sit and pray in the presence of God. And today we'll go to the word of God, what God wants to speak. Before going to the word, I would like that everybody, whoever is watching, close their eyes and pray for a moment that God will talk to us. Let's all close our eyes. Lord, I bring everyone who is watching this video in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus into your presence, Lord. We pray that you speak to them in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I pray that you open their hearts and let this word go into their hearts that has a seed, O Lord. And let the seed grow and bear fruit in the coming days. Lord, whatever disturbances while they're watching video today, I cancel it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every demon, every spirit which is trying to wander their thoughts here and there today, I cancel it in the name of the Lord Jesus. I bless your holy name and I pray, Lord, you speak to them whatever you want to speak to your children and open their life and heart in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I thank you for doing so in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you all, dear brothers and sisters. So let's go to the word. In today's uh, Days and today's situation, many people are worried about the coronavirus. Why is this come? What is the reason? Why is this God permitted? Why is all this happening in your life and my life? Dear brothers and sisters, there might be numerous reasons for this, but I would like to speak about the actual spiritual reason for this. So for that, we need to go inside the word of God. And one thing before we could, everybody right now are praying and trying to stop coronavirus. But I would like to say before stopping it, you need to know why it entered. When you know the reason, you can easily stop it. Likewise, when um, in, the, in Joshua, when the Israel people lose against Ai, when they go to fight against them and they lose the battle and run back, you know what Joshua does? He goes and sits and starts praying along with his leaders. For what? He's not praying, Lord, we are going for a second fight, please help us. No, 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 he's not doing that. But instead, he's asking, Lord, why this defeat came to us? So dear brothers and sisters, even when you go to a hospital, the doctor will first examine you and check and see what is the problem and then he will give you the tablet. He will not give you the tablet and then examine. So likewise, we need to know why this has entered. What is the root cause of this problem? When you understand the root cause, plucking it out is very easy, dear brothers and sisters. So let's all go to the word of God. To know the root cause of this, we will read Exodus 15 chapter from 26th onwards, which is very beautifully written in this place. It says, If you diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God and do that which is right in his eyes and give ear to his commandments and keep all his status, I will put none of the disease on you that I will put on the Egyptians that I put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord, your healer. Hallelujah. There is a verse here which says that if we don't do certain things, then God is going to put some disease. Right? So what are those things? We will see to that. The first thing he says, if you diligently listen to the voice of the Lord, your God. See, in today's day, many people sit in the church. They come to the church. Coming to the church is not a problem, but God is asking you, are you listening to the message with a diligent heart? Hallelujah. Do you know the meaning of diligent? Diligent means care or consciousness towards one work. So many people, you don't have consciousness towards what you are listening, what message you are hearing. After hearing the whole message, when you come out, when somebody asks, what is the message? Something that they gave, but it was nice because there is no consciousness. You're not diligently receiving the word of God, carelessly receiving the word of God. Many children of God today go to the church, but they take don't take care of the voice of God. They don't even hear the message clearly. Sitting in the church, they're worried about their house. Sitting in the church, they're worried about their job. Sitting in their house, they're worried about their bank balance. Sitting in their house, they're worried about all the things which are going outside the church. But God is telling, I am talking to you what is happening in your life. And I want you to hear in a diligent manner. Manner. Many Christians have failed in this day, brothers and sisters. How many times you, when messages come, when your phone rang, you have gone out. You don't have consciousness. 
When the message is preaching, you think something else. When the message is preaching, you open your message and see WhatsApp. When the message is being preached, you open your message phone. There is a time for everything. That is not inside the church when the preacher is preaching. A preacher is not preaching, but the God is speaking to you through the preacher. Always remember this. Hallelujah. You need to diligently listen to his voice. Many people don't do that. They are very careless about the word of God. There is a preaching going on inside, but you go and see outside, there are many youngsters taking selfies outside. What is the use of city coming to the church? Do you think God has brought you inside the church to go out and take selfies? No, my dear brothers and sisters. Have consciousness. You have failed in this. Many of us have failed in this first point. We don't hear to the voice of God clearly. We are careless about his voice of God. We hear the message, but yet we go and do the same thing. We hear the preacher say, don't lie, but yet we go and do the same thing. We hear the preacher say, don't sin, but yet we go and do out and do the same thing. Because uh, you're not consciousness uh, and you're taking it seriously. You're carelessly living it out. Come on, diligently hear to the voice of God. Otherwise, God will bring disease upon our nations. Hallelujah. And the second point, first thing is that if you diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God and do that, it's, that which is right in his eyes, you have to do what is right in the eyes of God, not what is right in your eyes, not what is rise, right in your husband's eyes, not what is right in your parents' eyes, in your relatives' eyes. No, do what is right in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. You do what is right outside world, but God is telling do what is right according to my realm. Hallelujah. Do what is right, dear brothers and sisters. The many servants of God in the Bible who have done right according to the word of God, God has lifted them up. God has lifted them up. Hallelujah. You know, David did what is right in the eyes of God. And that is why he was named as the king. Whereas Saul, you know what he did? God told him to kill all the all the animals, but instead of that, he didn't do it. He brought some of the best animals and kept it inside. And because of that, the Bible says that God regretted to choose Saul. Today, can you examine yourself and check and see if God is regretting for choosing you people? Because you are doing what is right in your own eyes, not in God's eyes. Saul did the same thing. Instead of killing them, he brought it inside and kept it because he thought, I will sacrifice this for the God. No, God is not happy about the sacrifice of disobeying. He wants you to be obedient, dear brothers and sisters. He wants you to do what is right in the eyes of God. Doing what in the eyes, in the eyes of God is nothing but doing according to his will. Do what he wants. Don't do whatever you want. When Jonah didn't do what God wants, he did what he, whatever he, he thought something, even after me prophesying, God will not do anything to Nineveh. So he ran away from bed to Tashis. Do you know what happened to him? He went into the mouth of a fish. Today, so many people are living inside fish spiritually. Come on, dear brothers and sisters. God is asking you once again, do what is correct in my eyes. Do what is right in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. Adam and Eve did what is right in the eyes of the snake. And because of that, you know what happened? They had to fall from the relationship of God. Today, because you are doing what is right in the eyes of others, you are going away from the relationship of God, dear brothers and sisters. And God has created to have a relationship with you. He has created you to have a relationship. You are breaking the relationship by doing what you want, what others want. And you are not worried about what God wants in your life. Think what God wants. Think, dear brothers and sisters, what God wants. Hallelujah. I wanted to do many things. My father wanted to be, be something. My friends wanted me to be something. But God wanted to be a servant of God. And today that is why I'm standing here. Are you doing the same thing? Or are you worried about your personal things? Come on, change yourself. Change yourself tonight. Change yourself this moment. Submit yourself. Say, Lord, yes, I'm doing what I want. I, I ask you for forgiveness. I want to do what you want, Lord. I will do whatever is right in your eyes, not in others' eyes. Hallelujah. Come on, dear brothers and sisters. Come on, dear brothers and sisters. Your friends might want you to come out and enjoy on Sundays. Your relatives might want you to come to their house on Sundays. Or your somebody so would like to want to come and spend time with you on Sundays. But God says Sunday is a summer day which is for me. And that is the right in the eyes of God. Do what is right in the eyes of God, not on others' eyes. Don't worry about it. Hallelujah. And many of us have failed in the second thing also. And third thing he says, and give ear to his commandments and keep all his status. 
give ear to his commandments. In the sense, he is telling, follow his commandments. How many times we have failed to dear brothers and sisters. And because of failing in the commandments, so many commandments we have disobeyed. So many commandments. So many commandments. Hallelujah. We will read one verse which says in 1, uh, 1 Kings uh, 18th chapter. 17 and 18. I will read it for you. You can clearly listen to it. When Ahab, this is a place where Elijah stopped the rain, and after stopping the rain for some times, he's in a he's in a uh, what do you call uh, that uh, chariot, and from there he's going to a widow's house, and from the widow's house, uh, God is asking him to go and meet Ahab. Now he's going to meet Ahab, and there is a conversation between Elijah and Ahab in that place, uh, which is very interesting. When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, "Is it you, you troubler of Israel?" Now Ahab is calling Elijah the troubler of Israel. But what Elijah is telling her? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you have and your father's house because you have abandoned the commandments of the Lord and followed the Baals. Ahab had to follow the commandment of God, but instead he failed and he followed Baal. Hallelujah. Many times I and you have also not followed the commands of God. Hallelujah. And because of that, as Elijah is telling, you are the troubler of Israel, people are saying that we are the troubler for India. You are the troubler for India. You are the troubler for if your nation. You are the troubler of your state. You are the troubler of your city. Because you have not followed the commandments of God. Without following the commandments of God, they turn to Baal. And today, without following the commandments of God, you are turning to your work, you are turning to your financial requirements, you are turning to the worldly pleasures, you are turning to your fleshly desires, you are not turning to God. God is telling to your brothers and sisters, follow the commandments of God. Don't turn here and there, that is not for you. Follow me. Follow me. Come on, dear brothers and sisters. Following Jesus is not an experience, but following Jesus is faith. You need to follow him. You need to go behind him. Instead of that, Ahab went behind Baal and he is troubling Israel. Today, India is being troubled because his believers are not following his commandments and going for their worldly desires. How many of you are running behind money? How many of you are running behind this worldly desires? You want to have more in this world rather to have more in the heaven. You think that your life is permanent in the world? No. Your life is temporary, my dear brothers and sisters. Remember it. Your life is temporary. And that is why God is telling, follow my commandments. Third thing. And fourth thing, what does it say? If you give ear to his commandments and keep all his status, whatever he says, if you keep everything, walk according to it, then the Bible says, God says, I will put none of the disease on you that I put on Egyptians. If you follow this only, he will not put any disease. If you don't follow any one of this, that means disease will enter the nation. That is what has happened. Disease, sickness has entered the nation. It is not because of the unbelievers not coming to God, but it is of believers who are not following the commandments of God. If you believe Jesus, don't think everything is okay. Believing is easy, but following him is very important. Many people are ready to die for Jesus. But God says, don't die for Jesus. Live and show for Jesus. That is very important. Hallelujah. Today this disease is there because I and you have failed in certain commandments of God in these four things. You think and see how many times you are not diligent. You are careless to the word of God. You are careless to the message. You go to a Sunday service because it is a religious activity for you. Don't go to a church because you are a Christian. But go to church because God wants to talk to you. Go to church because you want to enjoy the presence of God. Church is not to have a religious activity. Church is a place to have a communion with God and the Holy Spirit of God. Come on dear brothers and sisters. It's a school. Amen. Hallelujah. And I would like to tell you, now you understood why this entered. Now I'll tell you what is the safe. Many people think uh, washing our hand with uh, uh, soap water and all those things and locking inside the house is going to save you. I can't guarantee you. But there is one thing if you do, 100% you are safe. You want to know what is it? Let's read Bible. 32nd Psalms 6 and 7, which is going to be very interesting. Hallelujah. So here, 
the David writes, Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of the great waters and they shall not reach him. It says, everyone who is godly, if you are godly, you need to pray at this time. When the rush of the water comes, it will not touch you. The rush of the water is the virus, coronavirus. Now it is going to come, but when you pray, it won't touch you. See why it doesn't touch you. You are a hiding place for me. When you pray, your God becomes your hiding place. It is not your locked house. It is not your bedroom. It is not something else. But it is the presence of God, which is a hiding place for you and me. When you and me pray, God is a protector. Even when you go in front of a coronavirus patient, it is not going to jump on you because you are behind God. I am hiding behind God. How will go and hide behind a rock? Behind. So Jesus is in front and I am behind. When the coronavirus is coming, it has to first face my father. That is my God and then come to me. Do you think Corona can go to my father and then jump from him to me? No chance. Hallelujah. So God is our hiding place. Not because you are a Christian, but when you start praying to him. Hallelujah. You need to understand dear brothers and sisters. I have heard this thing. Many times you see deer, deer is this, they are very smelly when they don't drink water. And the hunter can find it very easily because of the smell. It, it goes for a long distance. But when they drink water, the smell will go down. The hunter cannot recognize or smell its smell where it is. He cannot identify. The same way, if you are not into the word of God or if you are not in the presence of God, your smell will go to the Satan and the demonic forces. But when you are in the presence of God, even if you are right next to them, they cannot see you because you are hiding behind God's presence. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, dear brothers and sisters. You can read Psalms 91. What does it say in 91? He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, because you are under his shelter, you are in his shelter, will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will save you from the pestilence. Today this Corona is a pestilence and God says he will save you, not because you are a Christian, but when you pray and go under his shelter, go under his shadow, go inside of him. Hallelujah. Today many of the Christians are missing is a shadow. Hallelujah. We have his name. We say we are a Christians. We go to the church. We have we, we, we prove that we are a Christian. But the one thing we are missing is the shelter of God in our life and my life. Today God wants you to stay in the shelter. It will come to you when you start praying. Very important. In the same wise, because he is in the shelter, you know what happens? Bible says a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Thousand may fall this side, ten thousand, but it will not come near you because God is going to uh, save you. God is going to save you, my dear brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. God is going to save you and me. That is very important. God is going to save you and me. So I told you two things. One, the reason for its entering this India and the world, coronavirus. Second thing is how to escape. Now we need to know how, when and how will God will release it from our life or release it from our nation or release it from this world. For that also we need to see the word of God. We will see 2 Chronicles 7th chapter and 14th verse which is also very important. Hallelujah. Okay, it's yours. It says, if my people who are called by my name, whose people? God's people who are called by his name. Who are called by his name? It's you and me, Christians. When we Christians are called by his name, then for me and you only God is telling. What is it telling to you and me? If my people who are called by my name humble themselves. Today, God is not seeing humbleness in his believers. That is the most important thing. There is pride and jealousy everywhere. Pride and pride. They bring something, I also need to buy. They have bought a car, I need to buy. They have bought a house, I need to buy. They are going to foreign, I need to go. What is this? Many, many people, many preachers, they are going to foreign even. If God is taking them. God will take you also one day. Hallelujah. Come on, dear brothers and sisters. Sir. You have to humble yourself. God has to see that humbleness in your heart. Go down to God. Humbleness is not in your status, but humbleness in your nature. 
Hallelujah. First thing is humbleness and then humble themselves and pray. The most important thing, many Christians today are not praying. They are happy with the blessings, but they are not praying. But God wants praying Christians. God wants praying Christians, not idle Christians. God want, don't want Namkawasi Christians. God wants praying Christians. Praying Christian is an active Christian. Prayerless Christian is a dead Christian. Are you a dead Christian or are you an active Christian? Today God is asking you a question. And God wants praying Christian. Be prepared dear brothers and sisters. He wants a praying Christian. He says, pray and seek my face. Don't ask whatever you want in the prayer. But seek the face of God in the prayer. Search for heavenly things in the prayer. Search what is there in the heart of God for in prayer. But you and I, when we sit for prayer, we always remember our family, our needs, our problems, our health issues. We just pray for that. But God says that is not enough. You can do for that, but I also want you to seek my face. Come on, start seeking his face. Humble yourself, pray and seek his face. And after that, and turn from their wicked ways. God is not telling this to an unbelievers. God is telling this to Christians. Many Christians are still in wicked ways. They are not doing how God wants. They are doing whatever they want. God is telling change your ways. Take over that wicked thing. Don't have that jealousy. Don't have anything. Hallelujah. Have the heart of God. See people through the eyes of God. Not through your own eyes. Hallelujah. Talk to them with what do you call a peaceful words the pleasant words lovable words God wants you to do all those things dear brothers and sisters and when you do that he says then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land God doesn't say if I have to heal the land I want all the unbelievers to become believers no he's not saying that but he's telling my believers who are already believing me should turn from their wicked ways that is very important. Have you turned from your wicked ways? Or is there still any wicked thing inside your heart? Whatever Bible says don't do, if you are doing then that is a wicked thing in your life. Come on, come out of it dear brothers and sisters. If you want the land to be healed, it's not only a prayer, it's the transformation of your characters. It's the transformation of your lifestyle. It is the transformation of you yourself changing from your worldly realm to the heavenly realm will release the heavenly gift and the anointing and the deliverance of this coronavirus on this earth. You want to be done? Come on, stand up, dear brothers and sisters. Live for God. Say, Lord, I've done these things. I want to change myself. Don't be a dead Christian. There are many dead Christians, but God wants an active Christian. When you start praying, you're an active Christian. Hallelujah. Many people say, church is closed. Church is closed. Church is not closed. Church building is closed. You are the church. You become active in your prayer, then your church is life. It's still running. God cannot close it. Come on, dear brothers and sisters. God is having great plans towards you and me. Nothing. Today, everybody are afraid of this coronavirus. Do not be afraid. God is not asking you to be afraid. As a Christian, you, there is no need for you to be afraid because there is blood of Jesus inside you and me. If you have heard about John Z. Lake, there was an Ebola virus in Africa. And at that point of time, everybody were, it was spreading like anything and everybody were in debt. It was a killing everybody. And that time God asked John Z. Lake to go to Africa. When he went inside Africa, everybody were covered but still affected by Ebola. But John Z. Lake was not covered but still not affected by Ebola virus. You know what? The scientists took the blood of John Z. Lake and he put the virus, Ebola virus incident and he saw the virus dead. I asked God, Lord, how is this possible? God revealed to me because uh, it is my blood inside his blood. Come on, dear brothers and sisters. Today, your blood, God's blood is inside you and me. Nothing can happen. Nothing can touch you. Nothing can do. Do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. Elijah went and spoke to Ahab with boldness. He knew that Ahab had already killed many servants of God. But yet, Elijah went because God told him, when God is telling you when you go, I am telling you nobody can touch you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Nobody can touch you. They were somewhere around 400 prophets of Baal and one single Elijah. Victory came to Elijah. There may be thousands of people standing against you. But I am telling you, your God will be standing with you. Hallelujah. Your God will be standing with you, dear brothers and sisters. When Elijah went inside, when his servant came out to see, he, when he came out for something, when he saw that he saw a group of armies, a big army surrounding them to catch him and Elisha. 
you know what happened he ran to elisha and said elisha they have come to catch us what to do he was afraid he was shivering you know elisha said don't worry my son why are you worried and he said lord open his eyes when his spiritual eyes was opened he saw the angel standing for them i asked god lord was it is only for elisha and god said whoever is walking according to me the whole of heaven is standing with them it is not you alone the whole of heaven is standing with you dear brothers and sisters don't worry about it hallelujah everywhere corona virus has closed the church but i am telling you god and the church should close corona virus in the name of the lord jesus god has given you the authority god has given you the power but come out of this ask forgiveness for your sins and start praying god will heal and heal this land in the name of the lord jesus let's all close our eyes and pray first of all i would like to say that ask forgiveness from god say lord please forgive me in the name of the lord jesus lord i bring everybody into your hands whoever is listening and watching this lord let your grace and mercy come upon them oh father lord i pray for our forgiveness lord many times we have did all the sins our character our pride and jealousy take it away we are living for worldly desires lord forgive us transform us oh father lord jesus in the name of god forgive our sins oh father lord cleanse us because of our sins lord today the land is not healed today i ask forgiveness for everybody and i pray that you heal this land in the name of the lord in this country let the corona virus be destroyed and stopped no more spreading of oh father lord protect everybody with your blood and fire i release your blood upon everybody whoever is watching and who's not watching and their family lord protect them in the name of lord take control of them lead them in the name of the lord jesus in this moment of time lord lord i pray that everything which is closed in the name of jesus should be opened right now in the name of god let the normal life begin in the name of the lord jesus let the fear of corona virus leave this place in the name of the lord jesus I cancel every negative things in the name of God. I release your presence a lot. Help us to be under your shelter in the name of God Jesus. And I thank you for doing so. Lord, I bless everybody Lord. Speak to them, lead them in everything in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And also Lord, I pray once again that you give the necessary things for all the people Lord. Whatever they're lacking, I pray that be delivered into their hands in the name of Lord Jesus. And I thank you for doing so. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we ask this prayer. Thank you dear brothers and sisters and uh, as long as this is there i think we will be continuing uh, the messages in the video so you can you all you can always see this updates for our next video thank you we have started this and let the name of god be glorified through this anything your our contact numbers will be there you can contact us give your prayer request we will sure be praying we have a prayer team which is praying for you regularly the moment you send the prayer team will start praying for you and i thank you and i would like to say you should also pray in the name of god jesus